good morning students in the last class we discussed about uh, isdn architecture and uh, different layers in isdn now in this class we we'll discuss about the channels available in isdn so uh, we have come across the point it uses b channels it contains b channel d channel and h channel for transmission of signals voice and the data okay now in this class we'll discuss in detail about what is b, b channel d channel and h channel so there are three fundamental channels in isdn we come we seen that one is called as b channel b means what basic information channel which is of 64 kbps another one is called as d channel which is also called as signaling channel which is of either 16 or 64 kbps it is available in two modes and third one is h channel called as high speed channels so it contains again three different channels h0 h11 and h12 h0 uses 384 kbps h11 uses uh, 153 k 153 kbps and 12 uses uh, 1920 kbps so based upon the applications or service we use different types of channels now we'll discuss in detail about what is the basic information channel so b channel and d channel are adapted from telephone digital networks with the common channel signalings okay i'll already come across this point in the previous class itself and uh, echo these uh, telephone networks already we know that they work under 64 kbps these channels will work under 64 kbps and these are evolved from a law and mu law of encodings of speech okay and uh, the quality of so the voice quality we can able transmit a good voice quality voice either with the 32 kbps also or even less kbps also no need to have entire 64 kbps for transmitting your quality speech voice it is possible to transmit high quality voice over less bit rates also either it may be 8 16 0 32 kbps so how to transmit an 8 8 kbps signal over a 64 kbps channel so for that we should use one technique called as rate adaptation rate adaptation means converting one bit rate to another bit rate is called as rate adaptation technique so here we can able to convert 8 kbps 16 kbps or 32 kbps into 64 kbps with the help of this rate adaptation technique so here we know that it contains an octave right it contains an octave how many bits octave is 8 bits 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 8 and eight. so if you want to transmit an 8 kbps uh, into a 64 kbps then in the first bit we have to place the information in the remaining 7 bits we have to pad one so in this way we are going to convert an 8 kbps into a 64 kbps okay in this active binary we have to place the information between the first bit position and the remaining all the 7 bits are padded with one therefore this is the way to convert an 8 kbps into a 64 kbps this mechanism is called as rate adaptation technique if you want to trans convert 16 means we have to use the first two bits for information and remaining six bits for as one in that we have to convert the 16 kbps to 64 kbps 
If you want to convert that to KBPS, the final idea is first four bits as information bits and remain four bits with one. So this is a way of doing conversion from a lower bit rate to a higher bit rate called as rate adaptation technique. Okay, so we have taken the general things. So there are some other signals which are contain lower bit rates or not these bit rates. Other than 8632, we may have different bit rates also there. So we can also convert those bit rates also into 64 kps in two stages. So, so streams other than 8632 kps can also be rate adapted to the 64 kps. But have to follow two stages. Stage one is first they are rate adapted to either 8632 kps. The second stage apply same method here to convert them into a 64 kps signal. Clear? So this is about rate adaptation techniques followed to transform the lower bit rates to a higher bit rates because uh, we have a channel of 64 kps to transmit 64 kps we have to rate adapt the lower rates okay so that is one technique but uh, we can also use a multiplexing technique so what the multiplexing means so in the 64 kbps Okay, without rate ad adaptation, I can able to transmit 32, 32, 232 kbps signals because we are using a 64 kbps channel. Okay, to transmit information in that, I can use 232, 32 kbps channels or 4 16 kbps signals. That is called multiplexing. Multiplexing means transmitting multiple lower rate signals on a 64 kbps channel. That is called as multiplexing. Okay. So B channels may be used efficiently by multiplexing two or more low rate signals. Okay. So multiplexing is limited only to 8, 16, 32 kbps channels rates. So not less you cannot do. Or, and that means we cannot transmit other signals rather than these uh, fixed rates it's that do for example you have 7 kbps signal you can also transmit it but first first of all it is rate adapted to 8 kbps then only you can transmit it okay now for example in the 64 channel i can able to transmit to 8 kbps signals 1 16 kbps signal and 1 32 kbps signal now it is going to replace all the 64 kbps channel this is called multiplexing multiplexing means transmitting two or more low rate signals in a given 64 kbps channel so there are two techniques are there here or two types of multiplexing schemes are there one is called a fixed format multiplexing another one is called as a flexible format multiplexing so what is the meaning of fixed format and flexible format first one is what fixed format for example so in the case of fixed format they are located locations. The locations are what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So in case of fixed format, they are going to make it as some pairs. 1 comma 2 pair, 3 comma 4 as pair, 5 comma 6 as pair and 7 comma 8 as pair. Or you can take it as quad. Quad means 1, 2, 3, 4 as pair and 5, 6, 7 as another pair. Okay. If you want to transmit 2, 8 kbps signals means it is going to use either the set 1 or set 2 or set 3 
or set 4 it cannot use 2 3 it cannot use 4 5 it cannot use 6 7 or it cannot use 1 comma 8 okay this is called fixed format there is some format is then if you want to use 8 8 kb base means use 1 2 set 3 4 set or 5 6 set or 7 8 set but not other sets if you want to transmit the 16 kbs 32 kbs use either 1 2 3 4 set or 5 6 7 8 set should not use 3 4 5 6 set okay for example here if I am transmitting 132 kbps and 18 kbps and 116 kbps for example so to transmit 8 kbps it has to use 2 bits actually it has to use only 1 bit so first it should be rate adapted to 60, sorry, 16 kbps so it uses this one set 1 this 16 kbps uses set 2 and 32 kbps is going to use the last set 5, 6, 7, 8 okay so in this way they can able to multiplex this is called as fixed format multiplexing we cannot adjust the sets 1, 2 is one set 3, 4 is second set 5, 6 is third set and 7, 8 is first set if you use quad sorry double if it is quad means 1, 2, 3, 4 as one set and 5, 7, 8 as second set so the drawbacks in this is uh, sometimes they are not flexible to transmit the information for example 180 is there and 116 is there or 216s are there and 132 is there you cannot transmit them with the help of this fixed format so you have to go for flexible format in the flexible format we can interchange you can use any bits for any bit rates ok I can go for 3, 4, 5, 6 as 1 set ok and so on that is called as flexible format multiplexing so out of these two flexible formatting is advantages so that you can able to multiplex more number of uh, slower bit rates lower bit rates in a 64 k base b channel so here we see one more point here ISDN permits to use b channel in packet switching generally our uh, ISDN can use in circuit switching as well as the uh, packet switching Generally, circuit switching refers to the speech and signaling, and packet switching refers to the data. Okay, so in case of I, we can also use B channel for packet switching also. So generally, we are talking about, we are talking about B channel for speech and signaling, right? Not only for speech and signaling. You can also use this speech channel for packet switching, but you can also use it for a data transmission. That's the meaning of this point. ISDN permits to use B channel in packet switching, semi permanent and permanent modes. So, in packet switching mode, the data exchange is done by X2.5 protocol, it is one of the protocol. In semi permanent and permanent modes, it refers to the short term and long term connections. Okay. So this is about B channel. Next one is D channel. So D channel is primarily used for carrying signal information already with series point to control and monitor the ISDN services. We can also use it, can use it as a common channel signaling for all the services. And the main application of this D channel is we can use it for user-to-user uh, -user signaling and telemetry signaling for uh, LSG set management. So these are some of the points regarding your D channel and coming to H channel we use this H channel for high speed applications such as to transmit high quality videos and high speed of passing miles and high fidelity audio signals and high speed data so for these uh, high speed applications we use H channels because the bit rate of H channels are 
large when compared to a B and D channels. It contains three modes H0, H1 and H12. So based on application I am going to use the appropriate uh, H channels. One of the application here you can see here you can also go for a multiplexing in case of H channels. That means transmitting that supports with the help of multiplexing it can able to transmit the lower bit rates, multiplexing group of lower bit rates in this H channel. Coming to H1 channel, it uses uh, 512 provided for international compatibility and H12 channel for the 920 kbps used for operating the 204 kbps channels. Okay, so this is about uh, H channels. So these are the exam, these are the channels used in uh, ISDN. for transmission of speech, signal and data. Okay. The rest of us will discuss the remaining concept.